Hello, welcome back. Here to deliver the final keynote of the day and of this year's Mind Trek 2017 is Jacques Vermeulen, uh, director at Smart Cities at Nokia. Today he'll be talking smart cities in search of sustainability will need sustainable smart city solutions. So please, a round of applause, Jacques Vermeulen. Thank you. Sustainable solutions, sustainability. This is about growing smart together. And the smartness, let's get this out of the way. You are attending this uh, wonderful conference. You're connecting with different people, with different silos in the industries. So this is already a smart thing to do, here live or later on the recordings. We are putting quite some challenges. We, the visitors, the citizens, the enterprises, we are putting quite some challenges on who are leading those cities today. And in fact, in those challenges, we have some opportunities. Those challenges are not new. Smart cities is not new. On the left on the screen, you see urban infrastructure, how in the Roman Empire, they tried to deal with waste, in this case, human waste, I would say. In the middle as well, today we are talking about passive cooling. Passive cooling has been around already for centuries, like in the Middle East, where special construction of towers and airflow gives you a passive cooling of your buildings. And on the right-hand side, there was a time where having a traffic light and having a traffic light operated by police officer were the smart cities evolution at that time. So if you think that the challenges today are huge, well, the future, the challenges will even be huger than today. World population is growing and the cities only account for 2% of the surface of this world. And in fact, the citizens' perceptions, the urbanization in this world is more than 50% and in fact is going to 70% in a couple of decades predicted. So the urban environment, sometimes you forget that the urban environment accounts for 76% of the global energy use and also the carbon emissions. So there's a lot of optimization being able to be done in cities. Urban infrastructure and services Maybe a, less, a little bit less in Tampere, but it's growing about the traffic jam, private traffic, how you deal with multimodal traffic. And of course, the urban society has got this pressure as well. There are more and more festivals happening, sports, culture, art. How do we deal with this? And so definitely managing urban areas is one of the new challenges in uh, this century, in the 21st century, and it's going to be more. There's one thing I would like to highlight as well. It's not only about challenges, it's also about opportunities. And if we see this from an economic perspective today, the 600 largest cities in the world, they account for more than 50% of GDP growth. So that means size does matter from an economic perspective and there are some opportunities to grasp there as well. So, grow smart together. Definitely there's a need of flexible and scalable technology and services that help making smart cities smarter, safer and more sustainable. So we are helping, in fact, citizens, governments, service providers, enterprises, tourists to deliver on the promise of smart city. And in fact, how we do that, in fact, the horizontal approach about having a network infrastructure, whether this is wireline or wireless, having this in place, if you connect at the bottom sensors and devices to the network infrastructure, you should be able, through the IP network, you should be able to horizontal platforms from an IoT perspective on your applications on top to connect to the sensor that you're allowed to connect to, that you want to connect to, with a certain granularity, with a certain accountability, and as well, right 
context aware to access that sensor. So in principle, devices and applications from a Nokia perspective, um, we don't really make them. There are a couple of exceptions like we think in the consumer health, there is as well the Ozo camera, the uh, 360 camera that you maybe did see at the Hackathon Challenge on this event as well. And on top of the applications, in principle, we don't make them either. So, GrowSmart together, it's about together. Because we can deliver the infrastructure, we can deliver the IoT platforms, we will see some examples, but we need this to do together for the applications, for the devices and sensors, and we do this a lot with local ecosystem players. So, let's look in fact at uh, urban infrastructure and services, urban society, urban economy, and urban environment. So, transport. Transport, urban transport, mobility, this used to be first improving the infrastructure, so more roads, better roads. Then it went to optimizing the infrastructure, and you have the sensors and the counters in the roads, next to the roads. But we see today that optimizing is not the only way and path forward. In fact, where it's going to, it's going really to a multimodal approach. So not anymore the times where I have my private car and I use my private car from home to the location in the city that I need to be, but it's going to Okay, if I use some private motorized traffic, maybe to the city outskirts, there I will take a high-speed connection into the city center, and then depending again on context, I'm on holiday, I'm on business, I'm wearing a suit, I don't care that it rains, you will take some other mobility options, it can be a local bike, it can be just on foot, or a taxi, or even some other means of transport. But in order to optimize those kind of urban transport and urban mobility, you need data. And you need data, real-time, historical, but also in the context. To give you an example, if it rains and there are more and more people that want to use public transportation, well, if you only have the data without the context it rains, then maybe for all the sunny days you want also to adopt and modify your public transportation schedules and capacity. So, real-time context-aware data. And what we see when you send the bikers, the pedestrian, if you do this like through mobile networks, like through Wi-Fi networks, you can get in things like origin, destination. And when you connect origin, destination to sensing and classification of the persons or the vehicles transporting through your city, then you can really look at urban traffic management, but also things like urban planning. Where should I put the next residence on my map, the enterprises, or social leisure? So these are the new things that you can do when you're combining, in fact, sensor data from different vertical silos, and giving this to different agencies in order to optimize your urban transport. Society. We see worldwide that more and more we have those nice kind of uh, summer festivals and winter happenings. And in fact, people today consume a lot of video. So how to engage with your spectators? how to let people engage with each other while they are maybe at an ice hockey game and they want to share their experience with their friends on location or their friends as well at home or somewhere else. So this new type of uh, interaction, it's definitely going as well to uh, interaction um, with video on the mobile side. And then you need that extra throughput, that extra capacity on the edges of your mobile network in order to deliver uh, capabilities to do the next kind of applications on your phones. So in terms in telecommunication, this is called mobile edge computing. And uh, we invite you to find out more uh, capabilities that you're able to do with uh, mobile edge computing.
having this additional computing power at the edge of your network, you can also do things like augmented reality, like for tourism. Me being today a tourist or a professional tourist here in Tampere, it would be fine if I can take my mobile phone, just point at something in my own language. I get augmented reality, more information about the likes, what I like to do, over day, at night, and the likes. These are just a couple of examples. Social inclusion. What we see is that with the mobility of humans today and the influx of uh, people from different cities, regions, and nations into the city, that social cohesion, where in the old days you were born, uh, raised, married or not, your profession in the city, everybody knew each other, it's becoming not that easy. And so what we have done um, in the past is we work together with uh, uh, local companies in Belgium where in fact the question of the city leaders was how can we improve the social cohesion. And we did this through a city game where different blocks were playing against each other, different city blocks. And in fact, how more people solved a riddle from the same block and were together at a digital totem, it was with near field communications with their cards, the more points they got. And at the end of the period, there was a prize being given by the mayor and people really started to say, oh, we have been living in the same apartment for weeks, for months, we never talked to each other, and through that game, in fact, we started to socially interact. Now, when you've got all those data coming from your senses, you want to put some intelligence in it. And we will see some capabilities that we have today to do. So, at the top left, what we demonstrated was we took data coming from cars. So, uh, today, every car has got a kind of IT bus, it's called a CAN bus, where a lot of data is passing, like acceleration, deceleration, like uh, as well, uh, braking, etc. And so you can get that data, and if you connect a small computer, like Arduino or Raspberry Pi, to your car, and you connect as well 4G and maybe 5G dongles to it, you can get that data out. We implemented as well some dash cams, and in fact what we did is um, getting that data out of the cars driving around, we could then detect very easily on a, uh, on a map where the traffic jams were, because you can correlate and program this to say sudden start stop, certain deceleration, certain stop, and this is probably a traffic jam. When you see this very easily on the map, the area that you're driving in your city, you're getting all the data. The more you zoom in, you can even get um, displays about uh, engine speed, but you can also get a dash cam display out of it. And so those kind of things, programmable components to launch queries on uh, the streams that are getting into the system are becoming more and more uh, important. So, what we do is, and this is a home environment, like a health environment, you have some sensors on the top, you can send some data. This data in red can be as well in the middle video. And in fact, what we do as well and definitely with some regulations on privacy. What we do as well is we vectorize video information to data. So if you are allowed to access it in a certain context, you see data, but you don't see the original video anymore. And this can be data like a person is moving. It's good to know, but you don't want uh, to show where that person is moving or some additional video on that data. So Transfer from one media to another media becomes more and more important. Then, of course, we have your programmer logic that you're deploying with it. This one is triggering alerts, and the alerts, in this case, healthcare, 
is going to the healthcare professional, depending on how you programmed the alert. And in fact, finally, for city leaders, how is this exposed? This is exposed through an almost human natural language query. So in the system, you see all the cars driving around with a dash cam with a connected computer. And then you see at the right hand side, the maps displaying the cars driving around. And the more you zoom in, the more information you see about that car. And then you can do things like alert me if cars are braking suddenly near me until things like even show all the dash cams of course near the locations of a tweet because tweet social medias are also streams that you can get into the system and with the programmable logic you can integrate that that you can have those kind of uh, human interaction with the system giving you the information zooming in on the map giving you video information yes or no depending if you're able to see this and um, we have this demo running with uh, uh, 400 cars driving around in a certain zone and giving you those kind of information. Urban environment definitely becoming more and more important. So the responses. Today you have some smart city verticals like uh, smart building where you optimize in heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and even access control, if you like to do so. Smart light as well. Smart electricity grid with uh, renewable energy and the likes. But in fact, the new kind of grow smart together and definitely together is starting to understand the analytics on top that you can do. Why as a city, region and nation, if you have too much energy in your grid, why try to export this to a foreign country and having to pay a lot of money for it? So the new kind of horizontal thinking is, I've got too much energy at a certain moment because I have all the sensors on my buildings, etc., giving me information. I've got a certain renewable energy coming on from solar panels or from windmills. Well, at this moment, maybe I will give an incentive to my government agencies and also to private people to charge their cars, their e-vehicles. And you give them incentives and they all connect. And in fact, a part of the surplus of energy is just taken into account in vehicles in homes. So these are the new kind of things that you are able to do if you deploy horizontal platforms. And this will evolve over time. The more you understand, the earlier you begin to do those kind of cross silo use cases, the more you understand how you can optimize and benefit in the future. So horizontal thinking, that was the first example. I will give a second example. If you have like a smart shopping mall, and you could say it's top notch, it's a smart building. Uh, you even have like location based services for the shops inside the shopping mall. Well, the moment that you have a calamity in that shopping mall, malicious or not, then all of a sudden you do not want additional people traveling into the shopping mall. So that means you're in uh, urban transport management. You want to give messages to people on public and private uh, transport to avoid that area. You want to give emergency forces priority to come into that area. And in fact, the emergency forces, if this is, for instance, a fire with a lot of smoke, they would like to know the situation at hand. So maybe the video that you're using for the shopping mall as a smart building, now you need to export that video to the people that are authorized to see it, like the emergency forces. And in fact, if I were into that shopping mall, my detected location, I would be very glad that the emergency forces get that location. So they get it out of this whole shopping mall uh, routine. They are able to find me. And when they get to me, I would like them to have a part of my medical record if I need some special treatment. 
So from this example, you see that it's all together, it's all connected, and the more that you implement horizontal infrastructure and horizontal Internet of Things platforms, the better that you can serve your citizens, your tourists, your enterprises, and the likes. Think real-time. Real-time is becoming a very important factor. Like in a shopping mall, you don't want to act of data like two days ago. You want to have this in real time. So where we see that the internet is evolving from traditionally browsing and searching, no more and more it's about finding relevant live streams. Even if you are like at a sports game, maybe you like to see what's happening on Twitter, on Facebook, uh, maybe on some media channels, other media channels in order to combine that information and to have a different uh, experience while you are at it. And so the requests that you're launching are going to be increasingly in human language instead of typing in a URL on a website in order to get to the information or some search keyword. And this can be even things if you have some respiratory problems, you could say, well, I want to know today where I can run and uh, show me the best part to do in the context about my running, but also in the context about the air quality in the area that I am. With this, we have a platform called uh, Worldwide Streams. It's uh, about distributed computing about logic, deploying logic in the cloud at the edge in order to do those kind of queries I was just mentioning uh, about. And in fact, whatever streams that come in from social media, from sensors, uh, from video enabled devices, this can be treated into the platform. And moreover, if you need some special routines, you can on the spot deploy some code that has been pre-written and the code is pretty easy uh, to generate in order to have additional capabilities. To give you an example, today, if you want to recognize license plate, you deploy some special camera, a license plate recognition camera. But what if something happens and you are in search of a yellow car? That license plate recognition camera is dedicated to the task to recognize license plate, but the yellow car, it will not be able to detect. So the things that we are doing today is in fact, you give remotely even downloading additional functionality or real-time context aware functionality to that device and saying, okay, I need to recognize the license plate. It's got some license plate recognition software. And the moment that you need to recognize a color or whatever, will deploy some code to that camera, and that camera will be able to do the task at hand. It gives you flexibility. Think local. It's good to have this kind of horizontal platforms, networks uh, as well, but a part is as well, what can you do for the local economy? Local economy, the enterprises, the startups as well. And uh, in fact, what we uh, did already from decades ago, we started with uh, uh, a program called MG Connect. Uh, it went to IoT community, where we took a kind of uh, business challenge to the market and then asked ecosystem partners to deal with that business challenge. And in fact, it came to a trial, a market trial with business models as well to better understand how this can work in the future. And then finally, there was a feedback being given as well. And some of the things that we did uh, earlier on was things like connected bus shelter, how uh, a city can, in fact, improve the uh, shelters in the city and the facility and services being given to the people wanting to use the public transport, but in a business model with uh, still not having to spend as much or everything 
to upgrade the bus shelters or the kiosk, information kiosk into the cities. So these are kind of things that we have a little bit more information on, but in the interest of time, feel free to contact me. And here you see a glance of uh, companies and partners that worked already together uh, with us into that IoT community hmm, in order to deliver a certain service. But that being said about horizontal thinking, when you insert, insert vertical. What does it mean? Choose your priorities. Choose what you want to do in your city first so that you can come to a result and that you can show to citizens, enterprises, visitors, you can show that you're actually progressing. So what we see, a good way to enter into that market is not to only deploy a smart, smart parking solution in a silo. It's to deploy really horizontal platforms where you select where you want to go first and you insert with partners on top and beneath you insert the end-to-end -end solution and application. Here are some ideas in which areas those vertical insertion could play. So one thing that is often forgotten is security. And within Nokia we take security very uh, seriously. And just two examples. Well, today, as data is becoming the new gold or the new oil or gas or whatever you want to say, maybe here in Finland, the new trees with the paper industry uh, in the history, you need to protect your data. And if you don't have your data in tr at least three geographical within the places, you don't have a backup strategy. But that backup strategy, implementing it, means you need to replicate data. So what we were able to show is that we are able to replicate data from one data center to the other data center at the light of speed, so with fiber. And of course, if you say light and fiber, we have shown that it's pretty easy to tap some light. You just bend a little bit your fiber, you get your light out, and if you have enough time and computing power, you can reassemble the messages and the packets being sent on that fiber. But what we do, of course, we detect the loss of light up to the meter so that people can uh, interact and take uh, actions when this would be happening. Of course, the other thing that we uh, do as well, and we got there um, a record at uh, the National Institute of Standardization in the US, is encrypting at the speed of light the data that needs to be sent over to the fiber. So security, these are just a couple of examples, very important as well. This was from the network side, but of course it goes as well to the IoT side. The other one is with all those connected devices as well. Uh, I think quite some people know about the Mirai bot, a distributed denial of service attack, where a lot of uh, IP devices like uh, CCTV cameras and the likes in the world their computing power was being used, their resources, in order to launch the DDoS uh, attack. And so what we see, those kind of new evolutions at that scale, you need to counter this. And how to counter this more and more, we are applying as well artificial intelligence to start to understand what is an anomaly. A CCTV camera is not supposed to send hundreds of emails per minute to a certain location, only a couple of alerts. And so you detect this, this is an anomaly, and then you need human interaction, then you need human attention. Some inspiring examples. This is about Singapore. Uh, Singapore said, well, in order to evolve, we need connectivity to the city. They did connectivity on the uh, uh, fixed wireline, it's still important to have that uh, connectivity. They did it as well on the wireless broadband side. And then they said, we don't know uh, what sensors will be there in the future. So what we will do, we will uh, deploy mechanical cabinets throughout the cities. And uh, this is about 
400 meters apart. And so they can hold up to two gateways and they know whatever sensor we, uh, we deploy into the city, it's 200 meters or whatever in whatever technology they need to be able to transmit and they will find a gateway. And so these are the ways how you can, in fact, horizontally prepare your city mm, to the next level, of course, uh, after the um, collection of data, it's to make some meaningful sense out of that data. And they are still on that path to evolve. Another example is uh, Bristol. And I'm giving examples from uh, far away and so from some other countries, because I think here in Finland, you're pretty aware of what also Nokia is doing uh, locally in different cities uh, regarding some ecosystem partnerships and some proof of concepts. So Bristol here, um, the UK said, well, most of the GDP, gross domestic profit, is being generated in London. So if London has an issue, the whole UK, Great Britain has an issue. There is still a lot of engineering and knowledge in the area of Bristol. And so they started to see Bristol as a haven to boost the economy going forward and to do a lot of experimentation. And maybe one example of uh, experimentation, while I was uh, visiting Bristol, and by the way, Nokia is also uh, uh, part of uh, uh, Bristol, Bristol is open uh, initiative, and uh, we did win in Singapore as well the, the IP core. But while I was in, in, in Bristol, um, there was a couple of uh, youngsters and they were building a next game controller. And they said, well, we like gaming and in fact, uh, when we game, we want to do the shortcuts, but we need uh, uh, a joystick uh, to manipulate. We are missing a hand, at least. And so they built a, a sensor and controller in uh, a kind of half bowl, they were sitting on it, and in fact with their body movements they could in fact operate the joystick hands-free, and hands-free to do the shortcuts on uh, the gaming. In fact, um, from the avionautics industry, there was an engineer who stepped through that area, saw this and said, well, in fact the planetarium with the 360 uh, projection that you're using for uh, once in a while doing some city games, we can in fact use to develop our new uh, avionautics engines. And we have a lot of data coming up. So, okay, we can visualize that data. But uh, the new controller that you're developing there, instead of gaming, we can use this as well because we have a lot of shortcuts on the keyboard that we need to do in real time in order to manipulate the engine data and to vi visualize this. And so all of a sudden, because they are all working kind of uh, starts up together. Uh, the idea of uh, gaming was propelled in a totally different industry and where they can, for the economy as well, use this in the future. Another example as well, since there are some 4G and 5G test networks, what you have here as well, uh, uh, with uh, the help of Nokia, driverless cars, they will be there in a foreseeable future. And so the regions and the cities like uh, uh, Bristol and the likes who today are experimenting with driverless cars, they might build the new electrical driverless vehicle. And so that's very important to give that infrastructure, that's very important uh, to work together, to work smart uh, together uh, in order to also give possibilities for the future. And it's not only economy, it's not only technology, what they are testing as well with those driverless cars that they are building themselves in the area is how humans interact, of course, uh, with driverless cars and what to do in case of accidents and the likes. The competitive advantage, and the competitive advantage is not only from an enterprise perspective, but it's also you are competing more and more on a global level for the citizens, for the enterprises, for the visitors, for the tourists. If you're able within 
this horizontal thinking with a vertical insertion point in different applications for smart cities, if you are able to deliver this in a secure way, in a scalable way, in a way that you can easily manage and operate, if I'm deploying a lot of environmental sensors and there's an issue, if I have to send an agency technician to go and reboot all those sensors into the city, that doesn't scale. So you need remote management, you need some intelligence as well to do this smartly. When you implement this from the beginning, that means as well you're building sustainable solutions going forward. So, that was the end of my presentation. I hope it inspired you uh, to grow. It inspired you to work smart together. And uh, we are very happy to be here. And uh, if there are some questions, I'm glad to take them. <laughs>